on Team America. Team America Soccer brought to you by Budweiser, the King of Beers, and proud sponsor of the 1984 Olympics. For all you do, this Bud's for you. The Tulsa Roughnecks have moved into first place in the NASL Southern Division at home Wednesday night against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Barry Wallace, a perfect cross for Adam Krupa, and the Roughnecks take a 1-0 lead. But the Rowdies weren't through. This is Tattoo. Tremendous dribbling. He lays it off for Jan Vanderveen. It's a 1-1 soccer game in the first half. But a Tulsa penalty kick from defender Barry Wallace makes it 2-1 here as he hits it just inside the left post. It would be the first of two goals for the young defender in the game on Wednesday. Adam Krupa chips it across. Ron Futcher a piece of it. There's Wallace with his second goal. And Tulsa earns nine points as they take a 3-1 lead. Late in the game now, Krupa again laying it off for Diego Pesa. The young American gets the goal and Tulsa beats Tampa by a 4-1 score. Fort Lauderdale losing last night at Seattle, so the Roughnecks are in first place in the South. It's Tulsa against Team America. Stand by for NASL soccer action from our nation's capital. A warm, sunny, breezy, a delightful afternoon here in our nation's capital today as the Tulsa Roughnecks are in town to take on Team America. Gordon Bradley, Team America, of course, after the 3-0 loss on the road the other night, basically out of the playoff race now. What can this team hope to accomplish between now and the end of the season? Well, of course, professional players have certainly got to have pride in performance, and they should go out there and play as a team, uh, as a team and individuals to try and win as many games remaining as possible, Bob, because pride has to take preference. And also, these players are playing for a place on Team America for next season. It's a future thing to look forward to. And, of course, Team America with a very difficult opponent today. The Tulsa Roughnecks have been in a dogfight with the Fort Lauderdale Strikers all season long. Terry Hennessy, the head coach of the Roughnecks, you got some good news last night when Fort Lauderdale was shut out by Seattle. So now you're in first place, finally even in games, and a chance to expand that lead here today. That's right, Bob. And uh, it's been a dogfight, as you say, from, from day one. And really, uh, the ball's in our court. It's up to us to go out there and finish the job off. And if we win our games, then we can win it. For the soccer fans around the country that have been watching Team America all season long, they have been able to hear about this Tulsa team involved in the playoff race. What kind of club can the folks look forward to seeing here today? Well, the one thing that we do, we all work very, very hard for each other. That's one of the main reasons we came back from a 2-8 and eight start uh, to now be 13-13. and 13. Everyone rolled their sleeves up, and uh, we played with a lot of intensity and desire. Uh, besides playing some, uh, some very good soccer. And I'd just like to mention that uh, Team America, in fact, can play a big part in uh, who's going to win the Southern Division title because they play us twice and they play Fort Lauderdale in the last game of the season. So uh, they can have a big say in it. I know with Ron Futcher now back in the lineup after being suspended for a while with penalty points, you feel like you've got continuity with Laurie Abrahams next to him and another talented young American, Diego Pesa, up front. Well, I do. I, I personally feel that uh, Diego Pesa is the more talented American forward in the game as far as technique, skill, uh, control, shooting, everything. Um, the biggest problem Diego's had, as far as I'm concerned, has, uh, has been his moodiness, and uh, that, uh, that stems from, uh, from a way back. Uh, but to his credit, he's worked tremendously hard the last uh, two and a half months, scored nine goals in the last 12 games. Super. Terry, thank you for joining us today, and good luck. Thanks, Bob. It's the Tulsa Roughnecks against Team America here at RFK Stadium in our nation's capital. We'll be back with the start of today's game after this word from your local stations.
A couple of teams today that are going in a little bit of a different direction. Terry Hennessy's Tulsa Roughnecks, he'll get out of the sun with that little cap, headed for the playoffs, it appears, and maybe a divisional title. While Team America certainly has had its problems lately, losing 3 0 in front of a good crowd of 21,000 at Chicago on Friday night, but just about out of the playoff race, Gordon Bradley. And uh, again, I think a key point here is this Team America squad of Alcus Panaguli is hoping to accomplish things and maybe get a few things in order for days to come in these last few games. That's for sure, Bob. Of course, the game against Juventus, the famous Italian club last Saturday night, was a freeze for good soccer. And uh, it's a pity they had to lose that game in Chicago on Friday. The starting line is for today's game. Winston Dubose for the Tulsa Roughnecks. He's got a 1.60 goals against. He's the only Tulsa keeper that's played it all this year. Val Fernandez, Terry Moore, Victor Moreland, and Barry Wallace at the back from right to left. Adam Krupa, the hardworking Billy Kasky, and Iraj Danaford in the midfield. And then up front, three of the better forwards you'll find together in the league. Diego Pesa, Laurie Abrahams, and the high-scoring Ron Futcher. Pasquale Pacillo, Ivan Belfiore, and Zucchini the subs today for the Tulsa Roughnecks. And now for Team America's lineup, Gordon Bradley. Well, the defense is starting with Arnie Mauser in goal. From right to left, Bruce Savage, Alan Murray, Dan Cantor, and Tony Bellinger. You'll notice that Jeff Durgan's been left out of the side today. Four midfield players, right to left, Perry van der Beek, Pedro de Brito, Andy Parkinson, who had such a great game against Juventus, and Boris Bandov. Up front, we've got two strikers, Alan Green and Mark Peterson in from Seattle. And the substitutes, Tony Crescitelli, Sonny Askew, and Rob Olson as we're underway. It'll be Team America going from left to right in their red, white, and blue home uniforms. Tulsa in its uniform that is normally a home uniform, the white shirts. Victor Moreland put that ball over the end line. A little bit of miscommunication there with an obviously unhappy Winston Dubose, and Team America gets kind of a gift corner kick here in the first minute. Just show, goes to show, Bob, that concentration is a must in the early part of the game. To lose a goal at this particular point can be very meaningful. Boris Bandoff will take the corner kick on the right side for Team America. He blows it just about over the top of everybody. Dan Kenner, the header, Terry Moore knocked it down and cleared it away for the Tulsa Roughnecks. Diego Pesa out of midfield for Tulsa. You heard Terry Hennessy talk about him before the game and how talented he is when his head is in the game the way it has been the last couple of months. And we'd like to say a special word of welcome to the Tulsa fans who are joining us on our network here for their normal local telecast today. Tulsa Cable Sports Channel 17 and its subscription television like to welcome all the folks in the Northeast Oklahoma area joining us today. Barry Vanderbeck on the foul for Team America. Barry Wallace will take the free kick on the right side. This is Billy Kasky. Kasky inside for Pesa. Shooting the gap there was Andy Parkinson, who's playing a midfield position for Team America today. After being a striker most of his career, but he says he has played midfield at Montreal in the past, so he's not foreign to that position. Victor Moreland. Far Tulsa in the midfield circle. Straight up the field. It's Bruce Savage rejecting it. A header by Bandoff. Ron Futcher getting position. Futcher for Pesa on the left side. Diego into the penalty area trying to cross. Futcher took a little swing at it. Couldn't reach it. And Alan Merrick cleared it away. And now a shot by Iraj Danafart is far wide to the left. It'll be a goal kick for Team America. In the early minutes, Bob, it's apparent that uh, Alan Merrick is going to play sweeper and be the dictating force at the back. With his experience, you should be able to do a good job back there. Interesting also to note that uh, Tulsa is showing three midfield players as opposed to Team America four midfield players, so we're going to have to look for the tactical move here by one team or the other. We have a foul of midfield call against Team America. It'll be a Tulsa free kick as we're only a minute, about two minutes and a half into the game. Tulsa was a loser here, one nothing, in a game back in May that was Team America's home opener. Alan Green scoring a late goal in that contest to win it. Good ball to Bruce Savage on the right side. A lot of movement up front. It's Bruce Savage playing it down. Mark Peterson got a touch on it. Barry Wallace knocked it away. At the 18-yard line, Victor Moreland back to Winston DuBose. DuBose this year 26 games, better than 2,400 minutes coming in. He's allowed 43 goals, four shutouts, a 1.60 goals against average that ranks him in the top four in the North American Soccer League. I see that he's tied with the old favorite, Colin Bolton, for 13 uh, shutouts in all, Bob. 
At the 18-yard line now, Team America moving from left to right. Bruce Savage on the near side for Pedro Debrito. Dan Kenner, the former Fort Lauderdale striker who had a hat trick at Fort Lauderdale a couple of weeks ago that actually helped the Tulsa team in a Team America victory down there. And of course, if you didn't pick up your Sunday paper this morning and see the score of last night's game, Seattle shut out Fort Lauderdale 3-0, which helped the Tulsa squad stay in first place in that game. Megson, Kemp, and Bartro scoring for Seattle. Some very unfamiliar names out there. They're playing a lot of people out there at the Saunders trying to find the right combination. And the other game, Golden Bay beat San Diego. Jungle, Terlecki with two, and Ingram with goals. Will Rich and Coker scoring for San Diego. Tremendous threesome that for San Jose and Jungle, Terlecki, and Ingram. All goal scorers. Arnie Mauser, you saw getting the start in goal for Team America today. It's been a platoon system here in Washington where he plays a couple of games, then Paul Hammond plays a few. Quite the opposite in Tulsa where Winston DuBose has played every game and Paul Coffey, the reserve goalkeeper, has yet to see action. Certainly doesn't help get a settled side changing the players around, although Alcas Panagoulias wants a good look at all the players so he can make his mind up for future. Here's Barry Wallace, who had five points in the game the other night. Two goals and an assist. Alan Merrick knocked down the cross. Boris Bandoff retrieves it for Team America. Wallace, a good play to get it back. This is Pesa for Abrahams, and it's intercepted by Merrick. Back to goalkeeper Arnie Mauser. Well, we certainly don't look for defenders like Boris Bandoff trying to dribble out of the area. That's a dangerous thing to do, as we saw there, where he got dispossessed. Barry Wallace, one of the swifter young players in the league, normally a left back, but Terry Hennessy encourages him to come forward as much as possible and utilize that great speed and knock balls across for Futcher, Abrahams, and Pesa. Parkinson playing midfield, back for Alan Merrick. He plays it long. Mark Peterson with the chest, tries to play it through for Alan Green. Not a very good ball, and it was easily rejected by Val Fernandez. Now Futcher, a head ball for Adam Krupa on the far side. Tony Bellinger defending against him at the 35 of Team America. Parkinson lost it back to Krupa. A shot that hit the goalpost. Abrahams, the rebound. Savage got there first to get a piece of it. He crossed it, and Parkinson pulls it down, and Merrick clears it away. But the Tulsa Roughnecks on a whistling shot by Adam Krupa hit the right goalpost. Certainly was an excellent shot. Had Arnie Mauser beat and all ends up. Ooh, Danafar taken down hard by Pedro Debrito. Danafar is down hard after a tough tackle by Debrito. Watch the great shot here by Adam Krupa. It's a left foot just bending outside of Arnie Mauser's outstretched left hand. Hits the post. Couldn't be finished by Wallace in the end. You can't come any closer to scoring. The ball hit the inside of the post. Iraj Danafard from Iran is the injured player. 38-42 remaining in the first half of play. We're scoreless at RFK Stadium, Tulsa and Team America. Barry Wallace on the free kick for Tulsa on the left side. We're scoreless. About six minutes and 20 seconds in. The ball comes in much too low. Rejected. Danaford got it in for Kasky. Perry Vanderbeck against Diego Pesa there. And Vanderbeck got it out of danger for Team America. But Tulsa coming very close to scoring in the first seven minutes of the game. That certainly wasn't the free kick that Barry Wallace wanted. With Ron Futcher standing at the far post, I'm sure that was the ball that Futcher wanted. Far post ball. A lot of teams feel, Gordon, that playing the ball high in the air plays into Team America's hands with Dan Canner and Jeff Durgan back there. With Durgan not in the lineup today, does that change the strategy that other teams employ against Team America? I think so, uh, Bob, but on the other hand, a ball to the far post with a player running in on it makes it difficult for a defender to clear. One's got a running start, one's got more or less a standing position. Barry Wallace the throw, Billy Kasky. Wants to shoot, hits it well, but wide. He got a lot of foot on it. He really it did, was... Bob. And we've noticed the shooting has been much better here at RFK Stadium since they improved the turf. I see the Redskins and the Dolphins didn't do a whole lot of damage here on Friday night in the NFL exhibition game. That was not a happy one for the home team here, but fortunately it didn't rain or anything, and the turf is in reasonably good shape after just being a war zone earlier in the year. They've resodded it. Looks much better than the first time Tulsa was here way back in May for Team America's home opener. That's for sure. Futcher against Cantor. It hit Ron Futcher before going over the end line, and it'll be a goal kick for Team America. They'll take it quickly on the near side as Arnie Mauser just put a new ball into play. So on the near side, it's Savage. Up to the midfield stripe, Victor Moreland knocks it down and clears it up to the 18. 
Abraham beaten in the air by Alan Merrick. Vanderbeck a touch around Billy Kasky for Boris Bandoff on the far side. He slipped, and it'll be a Tulsa throw in on that Team America miscue. It's a while since Alan Merrick saw action, especially as a starter, so we might be looking for a little bit of fatigue, exhaustion in the second half. We just pay attention to that. Bellinger shot the gap to take the ball away for Team America, then Tulsa got it back. This is Barry Wallace in the midfield circle. Across the 35, intended for Abrahams, Merrick knocked it down and Pesa picked it up. Savage gave it right back to Barry Wallace. This is Iraj Danafard, who was hurt a moment ago, off the chest of Ron Futcher. He's trying to turn it quickly, trying to get it between Cantor and Bruce Savage, and finally Team America cleared it away. Mark Peterson for Pedro DeBrito, breaking through. Defensive play made at midfield by Billy Kasky. These are two hard-working, tough midfield and tough defensive teams. Victor Moreland just colliding with Alan Green there. Probably would have been a foul had Moreland lost control, but Victor was strong enough to keep the ball, and referee Dilvo Di Placido let play continue. The linesmen are Guy Frecher. He's the senior linesman from Potomac, Maryland, on the near touch line. On the far touch line, Jose Reyes, the junior linesman from Staten Island, New York. Pesa. For Abrahams, crossing Futcher. He got it saved. It looked like an easy goal for Tulsa's Ron Futcher. And Arnie Mauser was there just to get a piece of it. I'm sure Futcher thought he had his 100th career goal. Even after Arnie Mauser touched the ball, we just had to wait and see whether that ball was going inside. Ron Futcher has 99 NASL career goals. He won't get many chances better than this to score number 100. Pacer brings the ball back, and there we see the cross, and Futcher standing at the far post nods it in. Arnie Mauser gets a palm on the hand, and it just trickles outside the far post. Excellent oh. header and a good save. Corner kick from Pesa on the left side. Krupa hit it high and wide. Ball the ball <laughs> found its way through there, and it's a goal kick for Team America. We're certainly seeing a lot, a lot of shots of goal from uh, Tulsa. Playing very well at the moment. Team America haven't gotten into this game yet. Arnie Mauser and Paul Hammond have been platooning in goal all year for Team America. We had a chance to talk to Arnie before the game about the platoon system and how it's working on Team America's squad for both he and Paul Hammond. Well, I think, you know, we're both seasoned professionals. We've been playing for, you know, almost 10 years in the league. I've been in the league since 75. So naturally, it's not that big of a deal for me. I'm ready to play at any time. And... You know, without warning, sometimes Alcas will play a goalkeeper two games in a row. And, uh, you know, even though I expected to play in Chicago, I didn't. So I was ready to play and well rested. And I took care of myself the night before to make sure I was ready. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's difficult. But I think overall it helps you in a way because you feel hungry when you go out there and ready to play. And you feel a lot more alive, I think, instead of playing every other day like we're doing now. It, it gives a, a goalkeeper a bit of a mental break and relief. Uh, Ken, I'm going to... Question in case Arnie okay, doesn't. Okay, now we have a corner kick on the right side. It's Iraj Denafard, number nine, taking it. And Mauser, the man we just talked to, high to grab it. Well taken by Arnie Mauser, especially with uh, Futcher being in close attendance. Arnie Mauser, as you see, the best goals against two years ago. He's got a good goals against this year of 1.36, but he doesn't have enough minutes to qualify to be in the top ten at this time. He only has 993 minutes coming in. They need 1,170. He would be tied for second with Jan Moeller of Toronto if he had enough minutes to play. Tulsa's Winston DuBose is fourth at 1.59. Paul Hammond of Team America is sixth at 1.70 despite not playing today. Of course, Paul has been playing 15 games and just a few more than Arnie. Noticeable here uh, also, Bob, that neither team is playing with an experienced winger, and therefore we've got that space on the wings for fullbacks to overlap or even uh, midfield players to use that space. Tulsa has two experienced wingers on its side, Zakinia and Thompson Yusian, but in the interest of the way that Diego Pace has been playing with Abrahams and Futcher, they rather put those three in the middle and basically give up having a winger. Barry Wallace will function as a winger on the left side. Adam Krupa from Poland, throwing it in for the Roughnecks. Ahead for Billy Kasky. They get around Bellinger as Krupa got it back. It's off the back of a Team America midfielder. It's a corner kick for Tulsa after Andy Parkinson had turned his back on the ball and knocked it over the end line. So Tulsa's had the ball down on the Team America end quite a bit so far. We've had four corners to Tulsa, one for Team America. Just at this time, Bob, I'd like to mention that Andy Parkinson playing in midfield against the Juventus team last week played such an outstanding game. And that's where he played on Friday night against Chicago, and of course he's there again today. Not a new position to him, but one I know he likes. 
Yaraj Danafar, the right wing corner kick for Tulsa. Again, they bring it in low. It's obvious they're trying the old flick on header to flick it to the far post and then have somebody punch it home. They're just not getting that first good touch on it. And Pedro Debrito will throw it in for Team America. Bruce Savage across the 35-yard line for the red, white, and blue. Ahead for Alan Green. The Team America forwards haven't been very busy so far. Savage knocked down from behind by Tulsa defender Barry Wallace. It'll be a free kick for Team America. Barry Wallace, one of the quicker players in the league, and even if you beat him, there's always the chance he may come back and catch up with you like he did right there. And Team America will get the free kick on the right wing from a dangerous attacking position. Well, that's a good quality for a defender to be able to recover quickly. And that looked like being Team America's best attacking move. Alan Green and Boris Bandoff. Green's on your left, Bandoff on your right. Down near the soccer ball as the referee moves back the Tulsa wall 10 yards. And we've got Hyde and Dan Kander at the back. The cross, Futcher is there defending. And just it's a remarkable ball all the way out to midfield Tre off his left foot. Tremendous left foot volley clearance by Ron Futcher there. You'll see a lot of that from both of these teams. Their stars, the guys up front, are not too big to come back and defend. Here's a nice ball on the right side for Futcher. Turns it inside. Another touch. Finally takes the shot. Bruce Savage blocked it. It's bouncing around like a pinball in there. And finally, Perry Vanderbeck says, I've had enough of this, and he clears it away. Well, that's for sure. Alan Murray kept looking at Bruce Savage. Alan couldn't get out of the way of that clearance. It struck him twice. Savage made two or three blocks in there. But again, the point I was making, Gordon, you saw Ron Futcher defend, and then 10 seconds later, he was up at the other end taking a shot. Both of these teams have people that do that sort of thing, and not all the teams in the league do. And of course, that shows you how fit you've got to be to be a soccer player. Especially on a hot summer afternoon in late August. Victor Moreland knocking it up. Pedro Debrito heads it away for Team America. Val Fernandez had Alan Green grabbing the back of his shirt. It'll be a free kick for Tulsa. The referee saw it and, of course, acted accordingly. Alan Green scored the only goal against Tulsa in a 1-0 Team America victory back here on the 8th of May. Futcher, a couple of touches for Barry Wallace. Wallace wants to get it out wide and then knock it across. It's out of bounds off the Tulsa attacker. It'll be a Team America throw in on the near touchline. And, of course, there's Mr. Consistency, Bruce Savage, who's played a tremendous season for Team America. Bruce Savage has played... 2,373 minutes, which ties him with Dan Kenner for every minute of every game for this American squad. Kenner's got four goals and an assist. Savage has one goal and three assists. And they got pretty good production from those young defenders as well, scoring-wise. I wonder how long it is since we saw a defender score three goals in one game like Dan Kenner did against Fort Lauderdale. You got me. We throw that one open for grabs. Last time I saw a defender score three goals was Bobby Orr, but that's hockey. <laughs> Barry Wallace on the near touch line, just across midfield for Tulsa, ahead for Ron Futcher. Vanderbeck out-muscled and out-hustled him a little bit for the ball. It's Pedro Debrito at midfield. He'll reverse it to the other side for Tony Bellinger. And of course, we can expect the fullbacks to have room like Tony Bellinger has there because they don't play with wingers. Down the wing, here's a long run. Ball knocked across. Victor Moreland got a piece of it. That was an awfully long run for Boris Bandoff, and he didn't have a real good chance to cross the ball high in the air the way you would like it. And, of course, there his position is open at the uh, defensive area. Someone should be covering for Boris Bandoff. Long ball from Pesa to Abrahams on the near side. It'll be a Team America goal kick. We'll take a timeout. 28 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the first half. We're scoreless. Welcoming you back to RFK Stadium in our nation's capital. We're scoreless, 27.05 left, first half of play. And Tulsa Roughnecks against Team America. Tulsa's had the better of the offensive play so far. Good look at Billy Kesky, hard-nosed midfielder for this Tulsa squad who's been with that club for six years. Actually, six with a year's hiatus in between as he had returned to play at Derby County in England for a year. He and Victor Moreland, the only original players from the first Tulsa team back in 1978 with this squad. Certainly, uh, Terry Hennessy deserves a note of praise starting a 2-8 and eight season and then coming to 13-13, and we can understand why they're on a winning vein here. The team's playing very well in the first 27 minutes. Long ball from Terry Moore over the top of Futcher, but Wallace should keep it in. He crosses it. Abrahams! Ooh, he got a lot of velocity on that header, but he hit it wide to the left, and Team America escapes again. But there's one of the most talented young scorers 
in soccer, the young Englishman Laurie Abrahams. I guess not a child anymore, of course. He's up in his upper 20s, but what a talented player Abrahams is. You saw a good header off of a good cross here. Yes, it was a good cross. It was somewhat of a diving header. Not too much. He couldn't get too much pace on it, although it went past the outside of the right post. Victor Moreland ahead. Abrahams chesting it down, trying to get it to Pesa. Now Billy Kasky picks it up in midfield. On the far side for Adam Krupa, approaching the 35-yard line. Futcher being hounded by Tony Bellinger. Back to Krupa. He's been an important man in that midfield so far. And a good steal there by Andy Parkinson and Boris Vandoff played it out. Finally, Bruce Savage will pass it back to goalkeeper Arnie Mauser. Mauser this year making his 11th appearance. He came in with a goals against of 1.36 and two shutouts. Long high kick to the Tulsa 35. Terry Moore, the former Tampa Bay Rowdy and San Diego soccer rejected it. Moore, a member of the Canadian national team, still with the ball on the far touch line. Plays it down for Kasky. It's over the end line as Dan Kenner shielded him off the ball. It'll be a Team America goal kick. Of course, two industrious midfield players in Kasky and uh, Danny Fard. We're looking at seven shots for Tulsa against zero for Team America. Three corners so far. As you can see, Tulsa has had two of them. Hasn't been very physical so far. I tell you, the first time these two teams played was almost a bloodbath. And there you see the saves. One for Arnie Mauser. That was on that header by Ron Futcher that looked like it had to be a goal. And there's the shots that Gordon talked about a moment ago. Offsides, Team America, one time. Mauser, the left-footed kick over the top of Mark Peterson. Moore got a piece of Alan Green, who is down and hurting. On the near side, the ball is headed back into Winston DeBose. And it doesn't look good for Alan Green right now. He was on the ground, and I think Terry Moore's boot got Green right on the knee. Seems to be in the cough area. They're going to call a timeout here to check on the injury, and we'll take a timeout as well as we check on the condition of Team America forward Alan Green. 24-03 remaining in the first half of play. Tulsa and Team America scoreless at RFK. Alan Green is okay, and you can see that they like to have him in there. He leads the team in points. Ten, not a big number. Here's what happened. He was already on the ground, and Terry Moore trying to come and get the ball. Caught him right on the knee there, Gordon. Yes, that seemed to catch him right in the knee area, but he seems to be okay now. It'd be a shame if Alan Green left this game. We ended up having a drop ball right outside the Tulsa penalty box. Team America's Green and or Peterson caught offsides as that ball was headed back in. So it's the second offside against Team America and a Tulsa free kick. Looking at the substitutes here, we've got Tono Cresitelli for Team America and Sonny Askew and Robbie Olsen. I wonder if Algus is looking to get Robbie Olsen in for his first minutes of the season. This is the first of a home-and-home -home meeting this week between these two squads. The fans in Tulsa looking forward to Team America making an appearance at Skelly Stadium Wednesday night at 7.30. These teams have played each other tough, but Team America is controlling the season series right now 2-0. They won 1-0 here, 1-0 in a shootout at Skelly Stadium in early June. Vanderbeck got it back to goalkeeper Arnie Mauser. We're almost halfway through the first half of play. About 40 seconds from now we will be. Approaching the 23-minute mark remaining. We're scoreless. Tulsa had a great chance when Adam Krupa hit the right goalpost on about an 18-yard shot, about seven minutes into the game. Team America hasn't had a dangerous scoring opportunity as of yet. Noticeable that Hayden Knight is not even dressed today. He's suspended for one home game. Got two yellow cards against Tampa. And has accumulated over 25 points. On the left side, Boris Bandoff crossed it in. Victor Moreland at the 18-yard line. I want to make a correction on something I just told you. Chicago is here Wednesday night. It's the following Wednesday when Team America goes to Tulsa to finish out the Southern Division schedule for Tulsa at home. They will finish the season at Tampa after playing at Fort Lauderdale next week. So things are going to be pretty exciting down the stretch between those two squads. And Tampa and Team America are going to have a lot to say about who wins the Southern Division. They certainly are. DeBrito tried to cross it in. Victor Moreland knocked it away. It'll be a throw-in for Team America. We'll be on the air here at 8 o'clock Eastern time Wednesday night when the Chicago Sting comes here to play Team America. Savage bringing it in. Dana Ford cleared it away. Of course, we've got to credit Willie Roy, the coach of Chicago, for taking them into second place in the Eastern Division. Done an exceptional job. 
Yeah, they started later than everybody else because of the indoor season. They've been chasing Toronto, Montreal, and the Cosmos all year, and they've passed everybody but New York. Fernandez on the right side for Krupa. Krupa at the 18-yard line. Pretty good cross. Abrahams with the chest. Then the oh, shot! Yes. Oh, what a goal by Laurie Abrahams of Tulsa. We talked about his skill earlier, and he made that one happen himself. one nothing. the Roughnecks lead. The same if he just not gapped to put it in, and he put it right there. One of the best goals you're going to see this year from Laurie Abrahams in terms of placement on a good cross by Adam Krupa. All the way over, chested down, and there's a left foot right into the far side. It's the only place it could have gone. Another look at it now from the other end of the field. Abrahams a rocket to the far post. Laurie Abrahams now with his sixth goal of the year. That puts him at 20 points. Six goals and eight assists. The second leading scorer on Tulsa. Ron Futcher is 13 points ahead. Krupa will get an assist. And there's your score with 20-35 remaining in the first half. They don't come much better than that. That was a perfect goal. Arnie Mauser was in good position, couldn't do anything about that. There was about a foot left between his arm and the post, and that's where the ball went. Ball headed by Bellinger, controlled by Adam Krupa at midfield. Of course, every goal crucial for Tulsa at this stage of the season. Here's Krupa in on goal! Oh, oh how did he miss that shot? The ball hit a Team America defender and came right back to Adam Krupa better than a 1-2, and he shot it wide. It should have been a goal. Let's credit Arnie Mauser for realizing that situation very quickly and came out and added the angle for Krupa. However, it could have been 2-0 very easily there. Val Fernandez also got an assist on that Tulsa goal, so it's Abrahams, his sixth from Krupa and Fernandez at 23-36. And there's the ricochet there, Bob, and we see Krupa coming in on goal. Mauser comes out very quickly. Inside of the right foot, just outside the far post. Very See, narrowly. I think the shadow of the ball hit the post, but the important thing didn't what get on goal. And now here's Team America with Peterson a header. So Team America comes right back down to the other end and shows some danger. But Peterson, the young man just attained from the Seattle Sounders, hit it wide. Goal kick for Winston DuBose of Tulsa. Dubo is one of the few keepers in the league with an assist this year. Merrick tried to clear it away. This is Billy Kasky for Tulsa. Nice ball up over the top. Right wing, Diego Pesa. Pesa being hounded by Tony Bellinger. Chips it in over the top. Krupa tried to center it to Abrahams. Abrahams a piece of it, still with it. Laid it off for Danifar, but it was behind him. Alan Green knocked down by Kasky at midfield. It'll be a free kick for Team America. Alan Green wants a yellow card call on Billy Kasky. Got nine shots for Tulsa, one for Team America. Alan Green may have just gotten himself a yellow card. The referee is chasing the man you're looking at, Alan Green. It'll be either a verbal warning or a yellow card, and it looks like a yellow card on Alan Green for dissent. Alan would do wise not to get back at the referee. It comes at the 26-30 mark of the first half of play. Green was tackled. A good, hard, aggressive tackle by Billy Kasky, but nothing dirty. And Alan Green demanded a yellow card on Kasky and ended up getting one on himself. It's only his second of the year. Ball headed by Terry Moore. Well headed. Pesa got a piece of it. Futcher against Vanderbeck. Pesa, boy, they really had a battle, Vanderbeck and Futcher, didn't they? Somebody called for backing in, and it'll be a free kick for Team America. Well, I certainly hope the game doesn't cut up. Just about five minutes ago, we had five fouls in the game. We've had three in the last uh, 30 seconds or so, so I hope both teams keep the cool. Ron Futcher's had a great scoring season, but he's had problems with the referees. We talked to him before the game, and he agrees he might have had a greater season had not have been for yellow cards. Yeah, last season was the same. At the same time, I uh, started getting a few yellow cards midway through the season. I started very, very well last year as well, same as this year. I just started getting a few yellow cards and the points started accumulating, you know, and I started missing the important games. And uh, consequently, I started uh, going down in the scoring charts because I started really well, you know. I had uh, 12 goals in the first 14 games, but uh, I've only scored once in the last seven games, so I've dropped off a little bit. 
When you have been in the game, what's been the secret to your scoring? You've been fairly consistent when you've played. Well, the team's been playing pretty well all season, except for the first six or seven games, and uh, we've been creating a lot of chances, you know, and if you create chances, you're going to score goals. Ron Futcher, 13 goals, 7 assists, 33 points, making his 23rd appearance here today. Eight yellow cards this year, seven of them for dissent. Some very logical remarks there by Ron Futcher. Laurie Abraham's looking to cross. He bends it around the goal and behind for a Team America goal kick. You wonder what Ron Futcher could have accomplished this year had he not missed those games. And we'll take a timeout. 17.05 remaining in the first half on a goal by Abraham's. Tulsa leads it 1 0. Team America has a left wing corner kick as we return to action. Pedro Debrito will be the man to trigger it. Peterson, Kenner, Green, and Parkinson all in the middle. Header, Parkinson! Andy Parkinson got the flick on header. No chance for Winston Dubose, and this game is tied 1 1. Very good goal by Andy Parkinson. A strong driven corner by Pedro Debrito. Somewhat of an in swing. Andy Parkinson met it perfectly. Here we see it again. Pedro really strikes this ball. Right foot, in swinger. And you see Andy come to meet the ball. Nutted down to the left side of the balls. No chance for the goalkeeper. Now Fernandez was stationed at the post, but he couldn't do anything about it. Now we'll see it from behind the Tulsa goal. This is one of the most difficult shots to execute in soccer. Perfectly done, and Team America has pulled even Parkinson, his fourth goal of the year. Pedro DeBrito, the assist on the corner kick, and this game is tied 1-1. 29-15, the time of the goal, so it came less than six minutes after Tulsa had taken the 1-0 lead. Nice to see Andy Parkinson getting that goal. He's playing well just lately. Ironically, Parkinson, unable to score much at forward, scores a goal in the game. He moves back to midfield. <laughs> I tell you, this game just doesn't make sense sometimes. Really? I guess that's what makes soccer what it is. Val Fernandez in midfield for Barry Wallace. Wallace at the 35, and we're starting to get ourselves a soccer game here, folks. Things are heating up a bit with each team hitting the back of the net. Well, certainly, uh, Tim America coming on quite strong now. There's a good run by Pedro Debrito. Debrito laying it off. Bandoff trying to get a piece of it. Ran Adam Krupa off it. Here's Vanderbeck. On the near side, Perry mishit it, just trying to chip it to Bruce Savage. By the way, that goal made Andy Parkinson Team America's leading scorer with 11 points to Alan Green's 10. Here's a bender over the end line. It'll be a Tulsa goal kick. Well, Mark Peterson was looking for a short ball by Bruce Savage. It went over uh, Mark's head and out of play for a goal kick. Winston DeVoe is one of the great veteran keepers in this league out of the University of Central Florida, broke in with the Tampa Bay Rowdy is a real fan favorite. They called him Dancing Do down there. And he's been at Tulsa for a couple of years now and has been a super keeper for the Roughnecks. Has played every minute this year. Wallace trying to bend it around Bruce Savage, but Ron Futcher was in an offside position and thus the whistle. Long ball down the right wing. Val Fernandez will get that one and let it go back to DeBose. Interesting story on Val Fernandez. He was playing with California a couple of seasons ago, caught on with San Diego at the start of this season, played one game when San Diego needed players after the indoor season. Then Ron Newman and company dropped him. He felt like he was treated unjustly and found a home in Tulsa where he's played pretty well on the back line. Tulsa had a lot of injuries and were very short on American defenders early in the year, and Fernandez really filled a need for Terry Hennessy. This is Terry Moore. Up to the 35, Alan Merrick, now Vanderbeck making defensive plays. Dana Fard from Barry Wallace. Slide tackle by Parkinson, but he was called for the foul yes, right. as he took down Dana Fard. Eraj Dana Fard is a very skillful, quick little player. He doesn't hesitate to go down, but most of the time it's realistic when he's knocked down. And He's so quick that he's hard to control without fouling him, and thus he takes a lot of lumps because of his size as well. He's only 5'6", 140. Against a guy like Andy Parkinson, who's six feet tall, 180. Moreland up to the 18. Futcher may have put his hand on the ball. Dan Kenner was up over the top trying for the header. I don't Futcher think, got a piece of it yes, with I, his hand. I don't think Ron Futcher was happy about that decision because Dan was up and climbing all over him, and I think he just tried to escape from Dan by flinging his arm up. However, 
It's a free kick given against Futcher. You can almost see Ron Futcher biting his tongue when he looks at the referee. He just has to control some of his emotions because another yellow card will knock him out again. He's been suspended twice, and Tulsa's also concerned about Billy Kasky. Another yellow card on him, and he'd have to sit out some, and you just can't afford that when you're in a playoff race. This is Alan Green on the far side. There aren't too many teams like the Cosmos or Vancouver in this league who can lose key players and then bring in another star to replace them with that kind of depth. You've got to stay with your best players and keep them in action. There's a good steal by Barry Wallace. Ahead for Pesa. He, Futcher, and Abrahams are three on three with the Team America defense. Parkinson's helping out now. Pesa for Futcher on the left side. Wallace hit it up over the top of the bar. It'll be a goal kick for Team America, but Tulsa did a pretty good job offensively in setting up a chance that time. We've got an early result from Toronto. Montreal leading Toronto 1 0. Dale Mitchell scoring in 6 17. See, that's a good matchup at the back with Fal Fernandez marking Alan Green. Mark Peterson's being marked by Terry Moore and Victor Morland's playing sweeper at the back. You saw the score from Toronto with Montreal leading 1-0. That is a very important game. Toronto is number six in the playoff race. They would play Tulsa right now if the season ended. And right behind them is Fort Lauderdale, Seattle, and Montreal. That's a big game for Lemonique. They almost have to win that one to get back. They're tied with... Montreal is tied with Seattle, Seattle for the final playoff spot. And of course, we'll look at the playoff situation for you at halftime. Gordon and I will take a look at the standings and how they rank for the playoffs. Right now, nine teams are fighting for eight playoff positions. Bob, strange to say, but looking at the point standing, Toronto's got 112 points. If Montreal beat Toronto today, they could probably go and will go above Toronto, making Toronto last. They could go from East number division. eight to about number five. Yes. That's how close it is. Here's the bandoff corner kick on the right side. Winston Dubose. Not a good clearance. Punched it over the end line. It'll be a corner kick on the other side for Team America. Well, here we've got Pedro going over. Can we make it number two? So you want to be a goalkeeper. <laughs> There's the cross. Of course, Perry's playing a goalkeeper close attention there. He goes up, doesn't get it out like he wants to, puts it over for a corner kick again. Heavy traffic, huh? Heavy traffic, yes. And dangerous place to be. I think we should make those allowances for Winston on that save. Pedro Debrito on the left side, swinging it in. Bit higher. This one, more like a goal kick as he really blew it over the top of everybody. <laughs> Vanderbeck held it in nicely for a cross. Abrahams was there to flick it out. Cody Vanderbeck did exceptionally well to get that cross in. Now they have a man <laughs> offsides on the left side. Make that three. <laughs> they had Peterson down the middle. They had Parkinson who was caught in there. And Bandoff at the top of your screen, the man who received the ball was in no man's land and Tulsa will get a free kick. No doubt about the call in the mind of the junior linesman on the near side, Jose Reyes. He had the yellow flag up quickly. Victor Moreland. Ball headed by Vanderbeck. It'll be a throw in for the Tulsa Roughnecks on the left wing, about 15 yards short of that left wing corner flag. Abrahams will leave it now for Barry Wallace. Could be a set play on a throw in this far from the end line. Tulsa really doesn't have anybody like Ricky Davis of the Cosmos who will throw a ball into the middle of the penalty area. They have basically short throwers. Danifard in the middle. Futcher was waiting for it. It was too short for him and too long for Abrahams. Alan Merrick trying to get the defense out quickly. There's the long ball, crossfield pass. Krupa, the header, intended for Futcher. Dan Kenner, just to be safe, puts it well out of play. It'll be a Tulsa throw-in. If you're wondering where the fans are, most of them are on our side, underneath our overhang, out of the views of the cameras. In the shade, of course. Danifard. I tell you, it's cooler here today. It was 101 here yesterday. A little breeze here, and not real bad humidity has things fairly pleasant at the ballpark on a Sunday afternoon, which hasn't always been the case here this summer. We've had some real steamers here. It's been a hot summer, that's for sure. And it's turned out to be a long one for Team America, the way things have gone the last couple of weeks. This ball is up over the end line. It'll be a Tulsa corner kick. Only 88 degrees. My goodness. I like it. Gordon Bradley is headed down to the field. The coach will have some. 
halftime interviews and observations for us from down there. We will also throw it back and forth and talk about the NASL playoff situation because that's what everybody is keying on right now. And it all, of course, leads to Soccer Bowl 83 from BC Place in Vancouver, Saturday, September 1st. You'll see it right here on our Team America network. Ball headed down, cleared away by Mark Peterson. Vanderbeck wheeling and dealing in midfield. Danaford waited for him to turn around and then took it away. Krupa, now it's Abrahams. Played it through, but Krupa had been knocked down and couldn't break back through. We'll take a time out here with 6.15 left before halftime. It's a 1-1 soccer game. Also up next on a goal by Laurie Abrahams at 23.36. Team America, a score by Andy Parkinson at 29.19. And we're tied 1-1. The Roughnecks, though, have a free kick outside the 18-yard line. Referee Dilvo Di Placido telling the Team America defenders to back up 10 yards and give Tulsa room in which to shoot. Wallace, a trigger man here, as well as Pesa. They're asking for 10 yards. Here's the shot by Wallace. It's blocked by Alan Green, who is cheating a little bit, but the referee let him get away with it. Down near the end line, Krupa looking to cross. Does on his second attempt. Abrahams crossing it up over the top of the bar, and it'll be a goal kick for Team America. In the Southern Division, Tulsa at 500, 13 and 13, 111 points. Fort Lauderdale, who would have thought that that high-priced team would be four games under 500 after 26 games at 11 and 15. They're two points back. Tampa 7 and 19 with 80 points. Team America 9 and 16 with 68 points. At one point, Team America was 8 and 5. They are now 9 and 16. Here's a cross by Pesa. Ooh, right into the goal mouth. Abrahams was there to take a whack at it, but he couldn't get it. Then there was a ball laying behind the net. Abraham shot it up into the stands. He said, I'm going to get a shot one way or the other. On the near side, Pedro Debrito. Vanderbeck is the man down on midfield injured. Debrito against Barry Wallace. Looking for something to work with on the right side. Parkinson was overlapping, but he was covered by Danafard. Here's Bandoff. Shooting. Oh, he hit the goal post on the right side. Bandoff hit it like a rocket. Winston DuBose dove hard to his left, and Bandoff hit the goal post. So each team has knocked one off the iron here in the first half. Bandoff some pretty good work. You see he has to get around Victor Moreland, who overcommitted himself, and then he let it go hard to the left of Winston DuBose, and the ball ticked off the goal post to the left of the Tulsa goalkeeper. Dan Kenner up over the top of Ron Futcher. It'll be a free kick. Of course, caps meaning international appearances for your country. Boris Bandoff. Has played 32 times for the USA national team. He's played with the Cosmos, the Oakland Stompers. Some of the great teams in the history of this league. Wallace, flick on header, Abrahams. It's put away by Bruce Savage. Mark Peterson, Terry Moore, probably touched it last. It'll be a Team America throw in on the far touch line. Two minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Gordon Bradley is down on the field. Gordon, Team America almost had one there, and I guess the goalkeepers love it when that post becomes part of their equipment. It's happened to both teams here. Bob, uh, that was a great shot by Boris Bandoff and a good save by Winston DeBoss. And there's another good shot just released there by Abramson. It's been some exceptionally good shooting today by both teams. That attempt by Abrahams was from 25 yards away. A goal kick for Team America. Here they come with less than two minutes remaining. Vanderbeck had it cleared away by Val Fernandez. Savage for Alan Green. A left wing ball, but Vandoff was overlapping down the left wing, but he was nowhere near deep enough on the attacking end to reach that one. Well, he need, probably needed to run 30 yards to catch that ball. The ball was there too early for him. It's interesting to note down on the field where I see it more clearly, Pedro Debrito covering 
Bruce Savage's right fullback position because Bruce is consistently going forward and is an extra attacker to the field and a very good overlapping fullback. But credit to Pedro for covering his position when Bruce goes upfield. Dan Kenner clears it away. This is Bandoff through the legs of Adam Krupa inside of Kesky now as Bandoff is showing some speed and ball control. Finally, the fourth man, Terry Moore, took it away. Just over one minute left now in the first half of this 1-1 game. Team America and the Tulsa Roughnecks. Vanderbeck against Victor Moreland. In the penalty area, Vanderbeck was trying to cross it. Victor got a piece of it. It should be a throw-in as the ball crossed the touch line rather than the end line. That was a great overlapping run by uh, Pedro, De, not by Pedro De Brito, but Pedro fed Perry Vanderbeck the ball. Was forced a corner out of it. There's the oh. newest newlywed in the NASL, Victor Moreland, married two weekends ago on the Skelly Stadium turf before the Roughnecks played the Golden Bay Earthquakes. How about that? It's Dubose controlling with 35 seconds remaining before halftime. Laurie Abrahams, his sixth of the year from Krupa and Fernandez at 23-36. Parkinson, his fourth from DeBrito's corner kick at 29-15. It was wise there for Winston DeBose to settle the play down because Tim America had been pressing quite a lot these last two or three minutes of the first half. Pesa against Vanderbeck. This is as aggressive as I've seen Team America in midfield in quite a while. Ball up over the top. Canner heads it away. Krupa a shot. Blocked by Bellinger. Tony cleared it out on the wing for Boris Bandoff, and that will end the first half of play. Well, things started off a little bit slowly. Adam Krupa hit the goal post seven minutes in for the Tulsa Roughnecks. Winston Bowes and his boys almost had a 1-0 lead. Terry Hennessy's team did take a 1-0 lead. By the way, that's assistant coach Steve Earle with Hennessy. Abraham scoring at 23-36 on a rocket shot, his sixth of the year, from Krupa and Fernandez. And then Alan Green, a yellow card for descent at 26-30. Andy Parkinson, his fourth of the year, on a nice flick on header from a Pedro De Brito corner kick at 29-15. Gordon Bradley is down on the field with the man who scored the Team America goal, Andy Parkinson. Andy, thanks for coming in at halftime to be my guest here. A great goal, Andy. Congratulations. How did it come, and what do you think about it? Well, uh, it was a corner kick from uh, Pedro De Brito, and uh, they, they brought their forwards back to defend uh, uh, Dan Cantor and, uh, I think, Alan Merrick, and uh, they left me open. So I knew if I just made a bit of movement in there, you know, I'll get a good chance and uh, stick it away. You so certainly made the movement, and it was a great glancing header. Yeah, Andy, you. what are we going to do to win this game today? We have to keep on pressurizing the midfield, because every time they attack, our midfield backs off, gives them all the room in the world in the midfield, and then they go attack, and they just clip the ball into their forwards, and they knock it off, and, you know, it's no problem for them. So we have to close their midfield down, as well as at the back. Andy, thanks a lot. Have a great right. second half. Good luck. Thank you. Back to you, Bob. Thank you, Gordon Bradley. That man, Parkinson, for Team America. Abrahams for Tulsa scoring, and we're tied 1-1 after 45 minutes of play. We'll have halftime observations after this word from your local stations. But look at the shots. Tulsa outshooting Team America by 10, 14 4 at this time. Eight corners with the red, white, and blue having five of them. Not a very physical first half. Only 12 fouls between the two teams. One save for Winston DeBose and two for Arnie Mauser. One of them an outstanding save on a Ron Futcher header that looked like it was headed into the net with ease. So it's 1 1 as we kick off the second half. Tulsa going from left to right. Ball is headed away by Dan Kenner. No substitutions visible for either team at this time at the 45-minute mark. I would have to think that both coaches are fairly pleased with the way things have gone thus far. Bellinger, the defender on the near side for Alan Merrick. Pesa and Abrahams, the Tulsa forwards that are watching them, and they handed it right to Terry Moore of the Roughnecks. On the left side, it's Barry Wallace at midfield. Danafart is the player overlapping out of your screen. Now they play it down the middle for Futcher. Three of them go down. Futcher still with it. Ball is knocked away on the wing for Danafart. Here is Danafart looking to cross in low. Abrahams knocked it down for Pesa. Pesa was in between steps and the ball was volleying too high for him to knock it down. Danafart on the left wing. Playing with a broken hand suffered in a fight. Well, a big melee just before a fight in Chicago several weeks ago. He's against Bruce Savage. Ball is still in bounds. Little cat and mouse. 
Ball hit the corner flag and stayed in bounds, and Parkinson cleared it away. Here's a shot by Kesky, blocked by Alan Merrick. And Team America will clear it away. Gordon Bradley has rejoined me. Coach, I would have to think that neither Terry Hennessy or Alcus Panagulius would be very unhappy with the way things went in the first half. Both teams did a fairly good job of taking advantage of their chances. Maybe Ron Futcher would like to have one of his shots back as well as Adam Cooper for Tulsa. Gordon, we'll have to check on your microphone there for a minute, having a bit of a problem with it. Try to get that back in order here at halftime. And it's going to be a free kick for Tulsa as Team America was called off sides. It was Alan Green on the far touch line. Winston DuBose in the penalty area for the Roughnecks. A goals against of 1.60 coming in. The Team America sheet says 1.59. I'm sure Winston would rather agree with the other guys. Ball is off Futcher, goes right on goal, and is controlled easily by Arnie Mauser. Okay, thanks. There we go. <laughs> Bob, I was just saying that I think Terry Hennessy, the coach of Tulsa, would be a little bit more satisfied with the first half performance, simply because it is a tie, and Team America have to carry this game to Tulsa to win it. A, a, a visiting team, 1-1 one, one at halftime, cannot complain at all. Pedro Debrito. Far Perry Vanderbeck, both a couple of former Tampa Bay players. Here is Denifar there to take it away for Tulsa. Trying to sidestep the tackling of Vanderbeck. Manages to keep his feet and the soccer ball. Denifar finally shooting. He was waiting forever to see someone break into space and didn't see anybody. Found himself at the 18-yard line and decided to let one fly. Well, you kind of go wrong shooting. However, I don't think that was his first option. But he did exceptionally well against Perry, Perry Vanderbeck by keeping control of that ball, keeping his balance, and keeping his composure. Some of you fans that followed the 1978 World Cup will remember Uriah Denifard with the Iranian national team in their stunning 1-0 upset of Scotland. He not only scored the goal, but he marked Archie Gemmel, the Scottish star, pretty much out of that game, and that was one of the big upsets of and, and that's World not, Cup 78. Sure was, and that's not easy to do, to keep Archie Gemmel out of the game. Walked into the Tulsa office in 1979 and said, hey, I'm a soccer player. He was living with some friends down in Oklahoma City and turned into quite a story for the Tulsa Roughnecks. He's been a good player at midfield for them for the last several years. Bandoff. Plays it inside for Alan Green. Billy Kasky, slide tackling it away. Gets it for Diego Pesa. Pesa's been a bit quiet this afternoon. Plays a through ball for Kasky. Alan Merrick is there to knock it away, but Fernandez put it back into play for Tulsa. Whoops, Vanderbeck got crossed up with Parkinson. Futcher almost stole it. Finally, it's back to Bruce Savage. Bellinger. Bandoff, who's been an important player on the left side for Team America. He certainly has, uh, Bob, did well in the latter part of the first half, making some good runs down the left wing. Alan Green chipping it around the outside for Bruce Savage as he switched it to the right wing. Savage against Abrahams, in for Alan Green. One touch, DeBrito, whoops. Diego Pesa says thank you to the referee, Dilbo DiPlacido, and here comes Pesa on a Tulsa run. Ahead for Futcher, 18-yard line, a shot, a save by Arnie Mauser. Well, that certainly would have been unfortunate if Futcher had taken the lead there with a the 2-1 score because the ball really was played ricocheted from the referee. Tulsa would have gladly given the referee an assist on this play. Huh. Pesa, great through ball, though, for Ron Futcher as he had beaten Bellinger on the inside, and it's tough to muscle a guy like Futcher off the ball. It really is a very strong runner of the ball. Try to poke it past Arnie Mauser unsuccessfully. So, chalk up two good saves on Arnie Mauser on Ron Futcher. Futcher's got to be wondering what he's going to do to score that 100th goal. A full volley attempted by Mark Peterson. It squibbed off his boot. Tulsa goal kick. We'll take a timeout. It's a 1-1 game with 39-10 remaining. We welcome you back with the Team America corner kick on the left side after Pedro DeBrito had ripped one from 25 yards away. A low shot that was hugging the ground, and Winston DeBose had to sprawl to punch it away. There we see Pedro on the ball. Lines up, hits it with his right foot. 
Winston dives. It looks like it was going outside of the post. And a bad corner kick by DeBrito on the ground, actually, and Laurie Abrahams didn't do very well. He could have controlled that ball and at least given them a throw in back and gave Team America another corner. So DeBrito will attempt it again from the left side. The heights at the far post. DuBose punching it out well. This one to go all the way over the touchline on the far side. Much better clearance by Winston DuBose on that corner kick. DuBose, 6'2", 177, 27 years old. And as that one comes up over the top, it'll be a Tulsa goal kick. It's noticeable, Bob, that uh, Boris Bandov has been given the permission to go up on that left side a little bit more because he seems to be playing a semi-outside left position. Probably two of the better overlapping left backs in this game. Boris Bandov for Team America, Barry Wallace, the speedy young Englishman for Tulsa who creates some danger up that left side. Krupa against Vanderbeck, Bellinger for Alan Green. Here's Vanderbeck quickly up the left side, plays it inside for Alan Green, shooting. If he would have been able to bend that ball around from right to left, he might have had a chance to score, but he hit it with the outside of his foot, and it was well wide of the goal. However, it was a good play right from the half of Team America threw into the Tulsa half and finished off with a shot on goal. It was a good move. Green, the second leading scorer on Team America with those stats you're looking at. Andy Parkinson now with four goals and three assists for 11 points after he got the equalizer here this afternoon. Rare statistic here, Bob, that that was Alan Green's first shot today. Tulsa has two 20-point scorers. Fletcher with 33, 13 goals and seven assists. Abrahams with a goal today, six goals, eight assists for 20 points. And Pesa is right behind at nine goals for 18 points. The leading assist man on the field today is Tulsa's Danifard with 10 assists. Indicated by such a good playmaker that he is. A lot of those coming on corner kicks. Long kick by DuBose all the way down to the 18-yard line. He's got that long drop kick where the ball, he actually half volleys the ball down the field. And you can hear the crowd getting into the game a little bit with that USA cheer of theirs. Here's Wallace, knocked down by Andy Parkinson. Good he ball. immediately distributes in the right wing for Mark Peterson. It's two on three right now, but they have Bandoff making a run straight down the field. Fernandez was there to knock that play apart and get it back to goalkeeper Winston DeVoe. Yes, the two or three players would have wished that Mark could have held the ball just a little bit longer. Pedro was going up on the right, Bandoff on the left, but he released the ball a little bit too early. Terry Moore, long ball, he shanked it over the touch line. It'll be a throw in for Team America on the far side. Nobody warming up for either team. They've gone with their starting 11 through the 45 minutes of the first half and now the first 10 20 of this the second half. Debrito for Alan Merrick. Vanderbeck knocks it down for Bruce Savage at midfield. Kasky was trying to check there. Peterson had it taken away on a good hustling play by number 18 Victor Moreland who you see making a run of his own. On the left side, Abrahams. Uh, bad ball for Victor Moreland. Yes, Over the end line, it'll be a Team America goal kick. It was a bad ball, too fast for Victor Moreland. Team America now warms up a player for the first time today. It's striker Tony Crescitelli, probably the most frustrated player in the league with 59 shots and not a single point to show for it this year. Scored a goal in Vancouver, but had it disallowed on an offside call. Asa, nice ball for Abrahams. Left side, the shot bouncing. Not much of a problem for Arnie Mauser. But a good shot by Abrahams, realizing that he was very closely marked by Bruce Savage. Just shows, Bob, that the good players up front managed to get the shot off. Whether it gets all the power or not, they managed to direct it on goal. Some of them, of course, go in. Mauser, left-footed kick. Peterson awaits. Got a piece of it for Green. Breaking down the left side is Bandoff. Victor Moreland got there first to cut him off. It'll be a Team America throw in on the left side. Ten yards in front of the left wing corner flag. Good chase there by both players. Bandoff got it back. That one will be over the end line. And it'll be a goal kick for the Tulsa Roughnecks with 33 minutes left before the end of the game or regulation time. Team America will make a substitution and we'll take a timeout. 
Chris Attili will come in for Peterson. We'll tell you all about him after this timeout with the teams tied at 1-1. Some things in life are constant, like the flow of water to the sea. And just as you can be certain of that, you can be certain that Metropolitan will really stand by you. Over 47 million people know that when they need us, we're there. Like water flowing to the sea, you can count on Metropolitan. For life, health, auto, home, and retirement, Metropolitan really stands by you. The wheels are turning at Boston Garden, for at this very minute, preparations are underway to bring the NBA championship back to Boston in 1984. You'll be there as Sports Channel brings you more exclusive coverage than ever before. Beginning this fall, if you don't want to miss nearly half the Celtics season, get Sports Channel, as we exclusively televise 40 regular season games. Don't miss any of the action beginning this fall. 40 big Celtics games are only on Sports Channel. Tulsa and Team America 1-1 at RFK Stadium in our nation's capital. Bob Carpenter and Gordon Bradley. Glad you could join us this afternoon for Team America Soccer against the Tulsa Roughnecks. It's been a good one so far. Terry Moore heading it away. DeBrito for Crescitelli. Trying to cross it. Lost his feet and the ball to Barry Wallace. Now got it right back. No one there to handle the cross, and Krupa will pull it down for goalkeeper Winston Abo. That was a good cross by Tony Crescitelli. Bandov was way outside the 18-yard box. However, if he could have gone in, there was definite opportunity there. I'll tell you how crazy things are in this league this year. First of all, Montreal 1-0 at the half at Toronto. Chicago at New York tonight. Can you believe what the Sting has done to the Cosmos this year? They've beaten them every time they've played. And to indicate to you how crazy that is, Tulsa has beaten Chicago three times, twice by 4 nothing scores. That's crazy. That's soccer. Victor Moreland at the 35-yard line. On the left side for Billy Kasky, it's Pedro DeBrito outside the penalty area. DeBrito looking for someone with space to work with. Ball is ahead for Tony Crescitelli. Hungry Tony Crescitelli. Ooh, he had a big collision with Billy Kasky there. Kasky is holding his left knee. Kasky, you can see, already has his arm bandaged up. I tell you, Billy Kasky really has to be hurt to be taken out of the game. I believe that, Bobby. Seems to be in pain. And it seems to be his left knee that the trainer's now giving attention to. Kasky and Larry Eggie, the roughneck trainer, concerned about his left knee right there. Kasky this year has played in 22 games now, one goal and two assists for four points, but he's known as a defensive midfielder in Tulsa's scheme, so he's not the kind of guy that's going to show up in the, the scoring stats. Here we see that uh, accident where Tony Crescitelli plays the ball, then makes his... No, he missed him there. Here he is, goes right into Kasky. And there's his left knee, seems to get locked and falls awkwardly on it. Good to see the referee is not stopping the trainers from supplying some of the liquid to the other players. It is a hot day. By the way, that substitution, Tony Crescitelli for Mark Peterson, was at the 5703 mark. Crescitelli this year has now appeared in 22 games, coming in 59 shots with no goals and no assists. Mark Peterson today made his third Team America appearance. He has one assist. That was the goal by Rudy Glenn. He set up in the 2-1 loss to the Cosmos. He played 21 games with 30 points for Seattle. Well, of course, uh, Mark Peterson came out of the game against Chicago on Friday night with an injury. I don't know if he's still feeling it, but he was substituted on Friday by Tony, and, of course, once again today. Danifard, there's what you call a mismatch. Danifard, 5'6", 140, knocking 6 feet, 180, Andy Parkinson down. Just goes to show, Bob, if the balance is in the right place, then you can knock in many a giant down here. We, don't, we <laughs> don't condone this type of play for the maybe small-statured youngsters at home watching, but... Looked exciting, didn't it? <laughs> Danafart's taken a few lumps in his time as well. Yes, he has. Yeah, we don't condone that kind of play, but that's how you do it, right? Here's Pesa on the left side, rolling it across. Ooh, Parkinson 
I think Arnie Mauser was waiting to see if Parkinson was going to boom it out of bounds or touch it back to him. Andy touched it, but it was just over the end line, so it's a Tulsa corner kick. Parkinson, of course, somewhat of an articulate kind of a player. Here he is running back to his own goal. It has to deal with that cross. He's only about three yards out of his goal and quite neatly and smartly plays it across for a corner kick to do the right thing. Looks like it's going to be an in-swinger. And, of course, the big men from Tulsa are at the far post. And Daniford at the near post. Well, that one came in pretty close uh, for Arnie Miles. Of course, we talked about Andy Parkinson coming back to help out on defense. He is a midfielder player helping out when Team America gets the ball. We talked to him before the game about his new role going from striker back into the midfield. Um, well, like you said, moving to the midfield, uh, it's, in a way, it's an advantage. But then again, uh, you have to try and make goals now. It's not just scoring goals. And if you score a goal, it's a bonus. So uh, I'm looking forward to playing in the midfield, and I've played there before. Uh, it's just a matter of adjusting a little bit, but uh, I don't find any problem there. Personally, which do you prefer? Personally, I prefer, uh, I think, the midfield because I uh, have, a, I think, a little bit, there's less pressure on me. You know, um, playing up front, you feel you have, I feel I have to score every game. and. Uh, Maybe that's the reason why I haven't been scoring any goals. So moving to the midfield does, you know, make me play a little bit better because I have more confidence there. Well, that's and of a, course, Parkinson got a goal out of the midfield today. That's a good point he made about having more confidence. He's playing with more confidence, and that's very visible. Well, in pro soccer, the guys up front are paid to score goals. If they don't, they're usually working somewhere else. This is Danafard. Left wing ball. Too tall for Ron Futcher. DeBrito pulled it down. Dan Kenner will cross it, rather clear it out of there now, toward the midfield stripe in front of the Tulsa bench. Terry Moore puts it back in play. Futcher heading it down. Dan Kenner controlling for Team America. A lot of long balls in the air right now. It certainly is, Bob. The teams are not patient enough right now to play the ball through the midfield. There's Krupa, right side for Abrahams. Nice turn of the ball inside. Ooh, a shot would have been on goal, but Bellinger was right there. Looking for support. Abraham's a deceptive player. In the middle for Kasky. Ball taken away by Vanderbeck as Kasky failed to control it. Now on the near side, here's Vandoff after a pass from Alan Green. Cody Vanderbeck's assisting him on the left side. That's who he gives it to. Overlapping is Vanderbeck. They've got Green and Cresatelli at the 18-yard line. Cresatelli heads it down, but probably about the only place to put it out of play. If he had it angled toward the goal, Green would have had a chance. Back across the 18-yard line, someone from the midfield might have had a chance, but it pays off for Tulsa with a goal kick. And, of course, another option would have been for Tony Crescitelli to leave the ball where Pedro De Brito was waiting for it. He They've got the trainer on the field down in front of the Team America goal, and I guess now they have indeed stopped play. We had that shot of them doing that <laughs> a long time before the referee ever stopped the play, so he'll probably go back to the Tulsa goal kick to restart things. 27-27 left in the game. The Roughnecks and Team America are tied 1-1. America has scored as we come back from our timeout. We'll get a chance to see it again. And guess who? The man in the midfield today with his second goal after being removed from the striker position, Andy Parkinson. And this was a tough play for Tulsa because they could have cleared the ball once or twice. They certainly could have. They've relinquished that goal. Here we see it on replay. And there we see uh, an unhappy Winston DeBose. The ball's played down the left side. Wallace Pandov makes his run. Daniford tries to make the tunnel. It's not successful. And Pandov gets his cross in. A defender tries to clear the ball, and there we see it. And that ball comes right out to Andy Parkinson, who drills it through, ricochets off what looked like a Tulsa defender into the goal. 2-1. Here we see it on another camera. Daniford's trying to get that tackle in. Actually makes the tackle, but Pandov comes out with the ball. Hits it with his left foot, low into the center. And there's a somewhat partial clearance to Andy Parkinson, who says, thank you very much. Looked like the ball hit either Winston DuBose or Barry Wallace on the way in. And that man has two goals now and has added four points onto his season total. And Team America leads the Tulsa Roughnecks 2-1. And we told you earlier that Team America would have a lot to say about who wins the Southern Division. <laughs> and you've got to know who the Fort Lauderdale Strikers are rooting for right now. Tulsa leads them by three points. But after today, Fort Lauderdale will have a game in hand. They are even in games at this point. This is Krupa. 
On the right side for Diego Pesa. Futcher flicked it on. Pesa the shot. It was blocked at the defense by Bruce Savage. Pesa did well to get some velocity on a high bouncing shot. Some good defensive and offensive play, but I think on that last tackle, Tony Cresatelli has certainly hurt himself. Cresatelli is the man injured at midfield. It's going to be an unassisted goal from Andy Parkinson at the 63 minute mark. It's Parkinson's fifth goal of the year to go with his three assists, and Team America leads it 2 1. Gordon, this is not a situation that Team America has been in much this year <laughs> ahead at home. Most of the time, they're a goal behind or equalized, and this young team will see how they react, but this is the tackle on which Cressatelli got wrapped up with Adam Krupa and got the worst of it. Well, that was certainly a good picture, and it showed you exactly what happened. Both knees kind of made a, an interlock, and there was power behind them. And I would hate to think that it was Tony's ligaments on his knee. Okay, let me put the coach to work here with his analysis. First of all, you're the coach of Team America. What is your thinking right now with a 2-1 lead at home? Well, certainly, Bob, I'm not going to play defensive because Andrew Parkinson, who's my MVP for this particular game and the most improved player for Team America, has been kind of the schemer in midfield. Just let them play as they are. Obviously, they've got to contend with some attacking power by Tulsa because Tulsa's now 2-1 down and got to throw players forward. But we can take care of that, saying that Pedro de Brita is looking after Wallace on the left and, of course, Bandov is doing an exceptional job here on the left wing. So play as it is, but don't forget to defend when you haven't got the ball. And if you're the coach of the Roughnecks, Terry Hennessy, finally, or rather suddenly, down 2-1 on the road in the midst of a playoff race, you're thinking there. Well, obviously, uh, Bob, I'm not going to tell them to do anything different to what they've done. They've, they've been having some, ob obviously, good shots and good play. However, when it comes down to the final 10 or 12 minutes, I'm going to put more people forward. That'll be a foul on Billy Kasky. Tulsa hoping it's not a yellow card because Kasky would be suspended again, I believe, and that's exactly what it is. That may be another suspension on that yellow card for Billy Kasky because they've been very concerned about the number of penalty points he's accumulated. Right now he has nine cautions and two ejections on the year, and that's number 10. Of course, Tony doesn't seem to be too badly hurt on that one. Here we see the replay where Perry Vanderbeck slides that ball in. And there's the collision. I guess Kasky, from the referee's, yeah. the referee's judgment, the ball was already gone, and Kasky took his man down. That's the way it looked, Bob. And, of course, it wasn't too clear of a view, but Kasky certainly barreled into uh, Tony Crescitelli. It'll be a free kick for Team America on the left side. We told you earlier, Tulsa has not been able to handle this team this year. They've lost to them both here once and in Tulsa once and now Team America with the upper hand here at RFK. You got to think Dan Canner is going to take this shot around the wall. There it is. Not much of a problem for Winston Navos. At least these guys make it look easy. It was a <laughs> difficult shot to handle but Winston was there in good shape. Well it was certainly well play shot although Winston I think read uh, Dan Canner's mind and just moved across and took that ball somewhat easily. Games played goals allows and shutouts the stats for DeBose 1.59 coming in 65 12 the time of the yellow card to Billy Kasky his 10th of the year that may cost him his spot in the lineup when Team America visits Tulsa a week from Wednesday for that final home game. Moreland at the 18. Futcher heads it down. Pretty good flick on header. Abrahams was there, and finally Alan Merrick cleared it away. But that's the way Tulsa likes to play it. The ball in the air with Futcher heading it down for Abrahams or Pesa. Now here's a steal by Diego Pesa. Through for Kasky in the penalty area. Oh, and a save by Arnie Mauser. Great save by Arnie Mauser and a good shot by Kasky. Kasky's only chance to score probably would have been a shot to the far post. When he shot it to the near post, Mauser was right there. But a pretty good play here by Tulsa. Was. Kasky gets through. Goalkeeper to beat. The ball bounced somewhat a little bit awkwardly there, but Mauser parried it away for a corner kick. It'll be Dana Ford. He's been dangerous. Ten assists this year on plays such as this. Header. It was flicked by Cantor over the top of Ron Futcher. Gressitelli will have it now for Team America. 23 minutes and 15 seconds, so Tulsa has a lot of time left to get in this game, but you don't like to be behind on the road. And Tim America have got a lot of space on this left side for Boris Bandov. No one's marking him and hasn't been marking him for the last 15, 20 minutes. Good aggressive play by Futcher to take it away. 
Whoops. Bruce Savage says, thank you, Ron. Up on the right wing for Alan Green. 18-yard line. In deep for Vanderbeck. He crossed it. Oh, it was offsides anyway before the whistle. So, if anything, it saves Tony Crescitelli from maybe a little more frustration at having another goal called back. I was going to say in Bosman, however, that ball was crossed behind Tony Crescitelli, and I don't think he could have gotten it into the goal, even if it wasn't offside. Adam Krupa. Each team has hit the post once today. Tulsa's had at least three chances one-on-one -on -one with Mauser stopped by the Team America goalkeeper. A header and a kick by Futcher. A kick you saw a moment ago by Kasky. And then Adam Krupa was in all alone in the first half, seven minutes in, and rolled it wide on a breakaway. So the Roughnecks could only blame themselves right now because they've had tremendous chances. They That's have. the name of the game is creating chances for your people up front. Kasky, Vanderbeck. Kasky gave him a rough ride, but it was clean, said the referee. Certainly bought it on a foul there. And there we have the release ball by Mauser to the open, Bandoff. Bandoff in the middle now for Alan Merrick. Merrick, Cresatelli will take a run now against Victor Moreland. Moreland times his slide tackle well and knocks it over the far touchline. And it'll be a throw in for Team America as Victor Moreland and his mates know they can't afford to let another one in. A lot of shouting by the Team America players to keep each other up and going. Ball gets through. Green. DuBose the save. Alan Green somehow got through there, and somehow the ball got through there. Somebody fell asleep in there on the Tulsa defense and let that throw in trickle into the penalty area. Well, Alan's got such a short backswing. He got that quick, uh, shot up very, very quickly, and DuBose parried that shot. Here we see it on replay. Alan's down, turns very quickly, and drives it into DuBose's body. Pretty good bat angle shot by Green, and DuBose was right there to make the save. A foul at midfield. Ron Futcher is the player down and holding his head. I think a lecture is going to be given to Harry Vanderbeck. Referee has something that he appears to be writing on, uh, and now he pulls out the yellow card on Dan Kenner. We see the play where Foot is in possession. Kanda comes in. Yes, he took him with his left foot. Then just went right over the top of him, and that's what hurt Ron Futcher. That was the that was the accident, I think, Bob. I think the initial foul was taken with a left foot swing at Ron Futcher from behind. And I think that's what he's getting the yellow card for. 69-20, the time of that yellow card. It's the second caution of the year against Dan Kenner. We'll take a time out here as they check on the injury to Tulsa's Ron Futcher. Team America on a couple of goals by Parkinson, up by one. Before we wait till we get the next close-up on Ron Futcher's head. He's got blood all over the top of his head. He took a hard shot there, and then Dan Kanner fell over the top of him, and that's what cut Futcher. Good turns by uh, Tony Bellinger. Tulsa obviously with a two-touch set play there. This is a three-on-two. Vanderbeck around Moreland, crossing. And it's over the end line. And Team America really passed up a chance there because after Perry Vanderbeck beat Victor Moreland, it was a three-on-one. Certainly was, Bob. And, of course, he executed that move beyond Moreland brilliantly. Clipped it over, but no one. I think it was Pedro Debris to try to reach it with his head, but just too far forward for him. Vanderbeck has set up three goals this year. Drafted out of high school by the Tampa Bay Rowdies a few years ago, Aquinas High School in St. Louis. And, of course, it's played for every United States national team, including the Olympic team. Abrahams, you saw him setting up for that shot. He loves that shot where he goes into his left and then curls it. He was getting set up, and the Team America defense snuffed it out. This will be a corner kick for Tulsa. They'll probably send Pesa to the left side. Fifth corner kick for Tulsa. Yes, they are sending Pesa over there. Dan Kanda giving the corner kick away, and wisely so. Pesa on the corner kick. Team da America scored from this position on a corner. Flicked on by Abrahams. Oh, Butcher has the goal. So each team has scored a corner kick goal here as Abrahams flicked it back perfectly, and Ron Futcher was waiting for his 100th career NASL goal off of that bloody head of his. 
Well, credit run for you, but it was a good corner kick. Seemed to be a set play. Pacer hits an in-swinger. It's a low one. Abrams puts it behind and over everybody. Mouse is already beaten, and Futcher comes in from the far side oh, no. and nods it into the net. 2-2. Two -two. There's, a, again, a backheader by Abrams. A good backheader. Arnie Mauser, of course, beaten on that backheader. And Futcher comes in and heads in from close range. The 14th goal of Ron Futcher's season and the 100th goal of his NASL career. He's been waiting a long time for that one. I don't think he'll forget it either, especially no. after heading it in with his head covered with blood after that collision with Dan Kenner. Doesn't look it, but must be happy, Bob. Well, Ron never looks happy during a game. <laughs> He's got his game face on all the time. <laughs> 14 goals and seven assists. If you're wondering where Futcher ranks among the league's top scorers, that ties him now in points 35 with Alan Willie for number 10 in the league. Willie of Montreal, 13 goals and nine assists for 35 points. Futcher with 15 goal or 14 and seven assists. Both one behind Romero of New York with 36 points. Well, four goals today between the two teams, some physical play. Some exciting balls off the post. Some great saves. A, a good game, Bob. A good game. I've enjoyed the game. And it's not over yet. Overlap by the fullback. That gives Tulsa, of course, another standing point, which is all important to them. They're now four points ahead of Fort Lauderdale with 113 to the strikers, 109. Interesting to find out how Montreal's going on in Toronto. Well, the latest we heard, it was at halftime, 1-0. That game started a half hour after ours, so... We probably will not have a final for you unless we go to a shootout, which we've done here a few times, haven't we? <laughs> Danafard in the air. Futcher back in the middle. Abrahams, ooh, tried to get it to Pesa. Team America snuffed it out well, and now Mark, rather Bruce Savage, clears it out of there. Harry Vanderbeck, high up in the air over the 35 into the penalty area, and Winston Dubose grabs it. I'll ask you the question one more time, Coach, from both coaches' standpoint. How does that goal change things now? Well, certainly because Tim America's playing at home and they've got to prove a lot to a lot of people. They've got to start playing more aggressively. I think they've got to put people forward. However, they have played well today. It's been a good game, Bob. And I think, obviously, the next goal should decide it. 70 minutes, we cannot say, but the next goal should decide it. There's my MVP on the ball, playing very, very well. They're skiing very well all day long. He could be the one that could lead to this next goal, if there is going to be a next goal. Alan Green, Caskey. Oh, 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 there's oh. the man, Parkinson. I tell you, he's having one of those days when he can be standing around in midfield and suddenly the ball will be right there for him. You see it happen with Kinalia and others all the time. Andy Parkinson having that kind of day today. Everything's coming to Andy and he's making use of it all. And from the standpoint of the visiting team, you've just equalized, but I'm sure Terry Hennessy's team can ill afford to relax at this time. Well, if Terry gets the tie, of course, he'd be happy to go into extra time and take it on the shootout there, uh, Bob. A win's a win when you're in a playoff race. Tulsa would love to win in regulation and go 11 points up on Fort Lauderdale. Here's Terry Moore clearing it away. Abrahams heading it down for Denifard. He's got Futcher to his left, Pesa, and Abrahams on the near side. We've got a game in with 35 shots, 22 for Tulsa. Here's Futcher rolling it across, too short for Abrahams, and Bellinger had no problem with it. Wallace tried to steal it away from Pedro De Brito. We'll talk more about that young English defender, Barry Wallace, here in just a moment. Here's Parkinson down the left side. Wide of the goal, it'll be a Tulsa goal kick. We well, talked to Barry Wallace before the game. Tulsa defender, he had two goals and an assist on Wednesday night. They want to see him push forward more. We talked to him before the game about his offensive role from the Tulsa defensive back line. Uh, well, uh, you know, Terry asked me to do that job uh, the other night, and as it was, it worked out very well. And, uh, you know, coming down the stretch, we're going to need a lot of points and, uh, you know, a lot of goals. And... Um, I think that's the way he's looking to use me now. You're a very fast player with great pace. How do you match up against a very good defensive Team America team? Yeah, uh, it's going to be difficult, you know, because uh, they've got a lot of quick players and uh, they're very fit. And uh, this is going to be uh, one of the toughest games of the season for us. 
course, Barry had that to say before the game, and I think that has certainly borne itself out here in this action today. 2-2 the score with 15.35 remaining. Tulsa has made a substitution. Number four, Pasquale Fuchillo for Ron Futcher, who leaves injured with a goal. Fuchillo is 26 years old, 5'11", 165, from British, came from Britain, rather, came from Luton Town of the English League and uh, is known as a very skilled midfielder, but he has had some problems on AstroTurf this year with his knees. He is fit now and playing in mostly a substitute role for Tulsa. Bob, with 33 minutes remaining, Montreal a 1-0 over Toronto. Team America, right wing, Krupa heads it away. Fuchillo, by the way, is appearing in his 16th game. He started nine. He has three assists on the year. Ball is over the end line. It'll be a Tulsa goal kick. Fuchillo for Futcher at 74-25. I know you're familiar with Fuchillo from the English League. Pasquale Fuchillo sounded to me like a player from the Italian First Division. If my memory serves me right, unless you said it, Bob, and I was just looking down on the field there. Fuchillo is from the Luton Town Club of England. And um, Tulsa must have some players playing very well to keep Fuchillo out of the side as a starter. They were calling for offsides and didn't get it. Or did they? Nope. The linesman never called offsides, and Bruce Savage pulled up momentarily, waving offsides, and it almost gave Diego Pesa a clean shot at the ball in the penalty area. We've got some positional changes uh, made by Terry Hennessy here because I see that Paddy Wallace is now playing at Van Stryker, taking Futch's place. We've got Danny Fard dropping back to the left fullback position, and Fuchillo coming in at his accustomed position at left midfield. Val Fernandez is marking Alan Green wherever he goes. Terry Moore is marking Cressatelli. They like to put ball Barry Wallace up front. Adam Krupa has been a big part of the Tulsa midfield today. Shot one off the post early in the game, nearly missed another chance. It's a 2-2 game, and it's been a fun game this afternoon, about everything you could want in a soccer game. It has been a fun game, uh, Bob, and of course, uh, credit must go to Alan Merrick somewhat here because he's coming to the side instead of Jeff Durgan and kind of with his voice and with his play, done a fine performance. And let's face it, there haven't been too many games this year when Team America scored two goals. So from an offensive standpoint, this afternoon would have to be considered a success for them. At this point, obviously a loss is never a success, but they have had offensive success with moving Parkinson into the midfield. Well, if we think that they played 25 games and scored 26 goals, that runs one goal a game. We've scored two today. Val Fernandez will throw it in on the near side for Tulsa. Quiet defender, nothing flashy, does, does his job game after game. Here's Kasky, ball knocked away on a good defensive play by Boris Bandov. Good defensive play by Boris, of course, and of course he's been good offensively as well, making those runs up on the left wing. Krupa will throw it in. About 12 yards short of the right wing corner flag. Wallace the first touch, Abrahams the second to the end line. It appeared Bellinger hit it last, so it will be a Tulsa corner kick from the left side. They will send Danafar to that side now to swing it in. Right on that shot, you can see how much bigger Arnie Mauser is than the other players from that ground level shot. Sixth corner for Tulsa, Danifan's come over to take this ball. Each team has scored on one. Players at the near and far post for a set play on the corner kick. Danafar brings it in, middle of the net. Pesa got up in the air well, but Mauser was right on top of it. Diego showed good leaping ability there, and Mauser at 6'2", 185, was not to be denied himself. Boris not happy with giving that ball away to, to nobody and for throw in inside the Tulsa half. Another look at the corner kick. Watch Pesa, number six. He'll come into your screen in full flight and then jump. There he is. Pretty good leap. Pretty good leap, certainly. Remind me of Cabanas a little bit right there. Here's Abrahams. Switches it for Fuchillo. Whoops. Fuchillo and Pesa said, I got it, you take it. Pasquale Fuchillo, long cross to this side. Abrahams manages to hold it in. Now he'll look to cross. Far post, headed over the end line by defender Dan Kenner who is defending in front of Barry Wallace. It'll be another Tulsa Kona kick on the far side, and don't be surprised to find Abrahams on the near post 
flicking it back over the top. You know, Fuchillo got that ball up approximately on the 35-yard line and drilled it across as a diagonal ball. The diagonal ball for all you soccer players out there is the ball that eliminates the sweeper out of the game. It was well done by Fuchillo. We've got an in-swinger corner, number seven. Pesa, there's the backward header, but it was by Vanderbeck, actually. Victor Moreland on the near side for Tulsa. He's being defended by Tony Bellinger. Whoops, Bellinger got it off the leg of Moreland, so a good defensive play there. Got it back for the defending team. You don't see that happen too often. Gressitelli for Vanderbeck. Andy Parkinson's available. There he is. You're anticipating the passes here, Coach. Good Andrew movement. At good, the 35. Good supporting movement by the Team America players at this time. Now we've got a two against one situation there with Pedro De Brito and Bandoff. Bandoff against Krupa didn't really have Adam Krupa beaten at all. Krupa just kind of waited and took it away. Yes, he did. Here's Kaski. He eludes Parkinson for the time being. Or Diego Pesa. Kaski gets it back. On the near side for Adam Krupa. The clock running with 10.30 remaining in this 2-2 soccer game. Danafard, after Facillo switched it to him. Facillo and Danafard playing a little keep away here. Kasky to the right of Pasquale Facillo. Whoops, Cresatelli threw his shoulder into him. It'll be a free kick for Tulsa inside the 35-yard line. A little bit complaining by Tony. However, he did make the bodily contact and give the foul away. 34 yards from the net is Facillo. Straight ahead for Pesa. For some reason, they'll retake the kick. It's because of a Team America substitution. They're going to pull Boris Bandoff and bring on Sonny Askew. Bandoff, of course, is probably a little bit tired from all those runs he's been making down the left wing all day. So they'll bring in the hometown boy, Sonny Askew, to replace him. 89-56, I'm sorry, 79-56, the time of the sub. Sonny Askew is 25 years old, 6'1", 175. Last played for Toronto, had a brief spell with the Washington Diplomats here a couple of years ago. In this game, Askew is making his 10th appearance. He's been a starter six times, has assisted on one goal this year in 611 minutes. From Baltimore. 10.04 remaining. Tall set two on goals by Abrahams and Futcher. Team America two on goals by Parkinson. Facillo in, knocked away by Dan Kenner. Alan Green leaves it now for Tony Bellinger. Canter for Parkinson. I'll tell you, everything Parkinson touches today turns to gold. That was a nice ball up for Cressatelli. Here's Vanderbeck. Through for Cressatelli against Victor Moreland. On the wing, crossed. Green in the air. Val Fernandez heads it away. Facillo against Vanderbeck. Kasky will knock it way down just to get out of danger. Good nice play by Tim America. Nice touch by Dan Cantor for Bellinger. They roll it through for Fernandez of Tulsa. 9.20 remaining in this equalized game right now. Tulsa led 1-0. Team America led 2-1. Bellinger stuck with Kruber there, did a good defensive play. Matchups all over the field now. Some good matchups. Bruce Savage is marking Laurie Abrahams. Dan Kenner marching, marking Barry Wallace, who has the ball right now. Somebody called for the foul there. Kenner gave Wallace a little bit of a shove from behind. And Sonny Askew is marking Diego Pesa. I would like to see Tony go back and mark Moore on this free kick. Moore is unmarked over at the far side of the goal. Terry Moore, a defender who likes to come up on dead ball situations. He's six feet tall, 172. Kasky will be the trigger man here. In low and no problem for Arnie Mauser. Laurie Abrahams was pointing to the turf saying, if you're going to bring it in on that angle, bring it in low. If you're going to bring it in high, get it away from the keeper. Bellinger, Fard Debrito, Fender Beck the header. 
Fernandez gets there first for Tulsa. Abraham's challenging Kenner. Pesa picks up the loose ball. Tried to play it through for Barry Wallace, and Bruce Savage has it for Team America. Eight minutes and ten seconds remaining in the game. Long ball. Good for attempt Hendes. by Sanasky. Kasky, it's on the right wing for Crescitelli. He's against Terry Moore, crossing, and who touched it last? It looks like Terry Moore of Tulsa. It'll be a Team America corner kick. Sanasky running over to take his corner kick. Seventh for Team America. Crescitelli throwing the ball there at Terry Moore, you saw. A little frustration. They played it out short. On goal, DuBose contacts the post as he goes high to catch it. Pasquale Fuchillo. For Diego Pesa. We're Under. looking at 23 shots for Tulsa now and 13 for Team America. Now Fernandez for Fuchillo. There's your score with 7-18 left in the game. Fernandez tried to play it around DeBrito, got it around the second time, but it was too late, giving Bellinger time to take care of Adam Krupa. Fernandez almost stealing it. Over the near touch line. Team America will throw it in. Bob Carpenter along with Gordon Bradley. Hope you've enjoyed it this afternoon. We've got a lot more left. Whether it be a winning goal here in the last 654 or overtime or a shootout. Parkinson passed there just a little bit too much for Perry. Off his head for a throw in for Tulsa. Danafard for Victor Moreland. Tulsa's at Fort Lauderdale next Saturday night. A showdown in the South. Team America hosting Chicago here on Wednesday night. Fort Lauderdale will be at Tampa Wednesday night, so they will be level in games again with Tulsa by the time those two meet a week from last night at Lockhart Stadium, and that should be a hot one. Should be. Here's Vanderbeck, 18-yard line. Moreland stepped into him. Alan Green, DeBrito, and DuBose is there. DeBrito blows the rebound out of bounds. We'll take a timeout. Tulsa goal kick with 6.05 remaining. We're still tied 2-2. Team America 2 with 5.32 remaining. Another substitution on tap here for Tulsa. Ivan Belfiore will come in for Uraj Danafar. Belfiore Gordon, a player familiar around the NASL, played with the Detroit Express a couple of years ago. Yes, he came in uh, from Detroit when the franchise was moved to Washington, D.C. area. Came to Tulsa from the Chicago Sting, where he saw action last year. Belfiore, 22 years old, 5'11", 172, a Canadian citizen has appeared this year in 18 games coming in, 15 as a starter, one goal. That was in the season opener at Tampa. Del Fiore for Danaford in the last six minutes of the game. Excellent uh, height and weight for a soccer player, especially a defender, 5'11", 172. Ironically enough, scored a great goal from way far out that night against the Rowdies with a leg that was bothering him so much he wanted to come out of the game. His right leg, which normally is not his shooting leg. 84-28, the time of the substitution, Ivan Belfiore for Iraj Danafar. And quickly into the play. Five minutes remaining as Facillo knocks it down for Abrahams at the 18-yard line. A late whistle. Team America won't be happy about this one as Dan Kenner was called for knocking down Laurie Abrahams at the 18. The whistle came a little bit slowly. You'll see Dan Kanner against Abrahams here after the ball from Facillo, number four. Oh, that was a definite push by Dan. Wonder why it took him so long to blow the whistle. <laughs> That's what made the fans upset. It was an obvious foul. Certainly. 13 for Team America now, nine for Tulsa. So the Tulsa Roughnecks have it exactly two yards outside the 18. So it's 20 yards out, but a shade to the right of goalkeeper Arnie Mauser. Well, Diego Pesa and Billy Kasky, the players you're seeing there. Bob, obviously we've got to have a set play lined up here. What they usually do is have Kasky kick it to Barry Wallace, who tees it up for Pesa. Facillo standing there just as a screen. That's what they do, and Arnie Mauser made a fine save. Tremendous execution, a great save by Arnie Mauser. Here's Krupa crossing. It's over the end line. Off the leg of Tony Bellinger, it'll be a Tulsa 
corner kick, but they executed the dead ball set piece, as the British call it. Well, that ball perfectly. was it was drilled into Arnie Mouser, who made a great save. Now a corner for Chilo coming over, take the corner, in swinger, people at the near and the far. With the left foot, in low, ball knocked away by Andy Parkinson. Under four and a half minutes left in the game. Sonny Askew knocked down by Pasquale Fuchillo. I think a little bit pulling there by Fuchillo. Running away from the referee, but I think the referee wants to have a word with him. I don't think it'll be a yellow card. It's the old verbal warning. No, he's given him one. <laughs> well, it's a harsh. verbal warning, but a manual card. That's what I meant to say. A little bit harsh for one foul like that on Fuchillo. That's why I uh, didn't expect him to get the card because he hasn't exactly been a bad boy since he's been in the game just a few minutes. He hasn't. I don't think it was warranted. 85-43, the time of that yellow card. Three Fuch assists for three points. Fuchillo, a mild-mannered man. That's his second yellow card of the year. Alan Merrick, back for goalkeeper Arnie Mauser. Are we headed to overtime? We'll know about four minutes and five seconds from right now. Well, both teams must keep concentration here. Cannot afford to make any silly mistakes. Vanderbeck tried to play it through for Tony Bellinger. On the near touchline, Askew keeps it in. Bellinger at the 18 for Crescitelli. Crescitelli for Parkinson. And Belfiore is there to make the Tulsa defensive play. Belfiore the, read that very well. On the right wing, it's Alan Green against Val Fernandez. Pretty good cross. Terry Moore heads it away. Fernandez will put this one long down the field. Wallace, nice flick pass for Diego Pesa. Seeing some good soccer here today. You certainly have, uh, Bob. I've enjoyed the game. Both teams have played very well. 3.20 remaining. It's also looking to go over the 500 mark for the first time all year. They started out 2-8. and eight. They're now 13-13. and 13. Fort Lauderdale, 11 and 15, but only four points behind Tulsa, counting the two Tulsa bonus points here today. A lot of credit to Terry Hennessy for turning his team around. I guess along with the Cosmos and Vancouver they've had, and Chicago, I guess, those would be the four best teams with winning percentage in the second half of the season. Merrick up over the 35. Crescitelli all over Terry Moore. That should be a Tulsa free kick. And of course, uh, we may ask Bob if one was a yellow card, why not the next one? <laughs> Only Dilvo Di Placido <laughs> knows for sure. Victor Moreland for Belfiore. Two and a half minutes remaining in the game now. Tulsa's booked on a 615 flight out of Washington back home tonight. I'm not sure they're going to make it. It's approaching. Quarter of five here in D.C. Pesa, the man called for the foul. It'll be a free kick for Team America. Andy Parkinson, the man of the match from the Team America standpoint today. I would have to also say that if you were picking an MVP for Team America, Arnie Mauser would have to be considered. He's made some sparkling saves. No question about it. And of course, I wouldn't eliminate Bruce Savage. 145 remaining as Crescitelli's in the penalty area. This is Tony Bellinger. In the middle for Parkinson. A couple of touches. Tried to play a through ball for Vanderbeck, but Victor Moreland cut it off before it could get through there. Moreland for Pesa. Terry Moore. Up across midfield. Barry Wallace has some space, but he's two on three. Now Pesa joins in. Wallace plays it to Diego Pesa. Abrahams. Scores! Team America's going to be all over the officials. They thought he was offside. That's for sure. Alan Merrick looked around and appealed to the linesman for the offside. The linesman didn't put his flag up. Now, Atlas Panagulius, the coach, is arguing with the linesman for the offside call, which never came. I don't know if they're going to reconsider this one or not, but it appears the referee may want to talk to the linesman. Panagulius is all over the linesman, but it appears Tulsa has scored a goal with a minute nine left to take a 3-2 to two lead. Senior linesman going for a chew at number 18 doesn't seem to have any doubt that the ball was that the ball was onside and the player was onside when he received that ball. The key is not when he received it but when the ball was played to him and that's what Team America cannot believe. 
It looks like it will stand as the seventh goal of the year from Laurie Abrahams. I don't know if we should have our microphone on down there or not. This is a family show. Here we see the situation. Tulsa player with the ball crosses it over to Pesa, who helps it on to Abrahams, who drills it in with his left foot. Seem to be in an offside position, but who can tell unless you're on line with it and right up there with the play? That's right. It's hard for us to make the call from this angle. About the only person that can make that call is the linesman. No question, and the linesman seem to be in position. Wallace with one touch, and now Pesa. So you see Abrahams was backing up. Seemed to back up there. There's the hands going up by Team America for the offside. No question in their minds. Abrahams hit a great shot to finish the play, but you could see him at the top of the screen backing up a little bit. He might have felt he was offsides a little bit and then got in the play. And now Alcas Panagulius has been given a yellow card. Yes, he has. Here we see it again on another replay. The ball was one touch right over to Abrams. There's Savage's hand goes immediately up to a point for the offside. And Abrahams, of course, runs onto it and finishes it off. Panagoulis has got the yellow card. He's still arguing with the linesman. The whole of Team America are appealing this play. Now we have the referee coming over to release Panagoulis. Rudy Glenn, the man in his street clothes, helping out there. It's Laurie Abrahams, his seventh goal of the year from Diego Pesa and Barry Wallace at 88-45, and then a yellow card on the Team America coach at 88-51. And when things are going bad, they're going bad, and of course it's ironic, Bob, that Guy Frichua, the linesman that did not call the offside, is a local linesman from the Washington, D.C. area. And is somewhat adamant in his own mind, in his own opinion. Jeff Durgan is challenging the alternate official. Can the fourth man give out a yellow card? I guess he can tell the referee. Okay. Tulsa leads it 3-2 with one minute left, and they have to feel like they might have stolen one right there. But it's going to be a great nine-point victory for them if they can walk out of here with it. No question about that with 48 seconds left. It's Andy Parkinson in midfield. They'll be looking at the replay of that one on the 10 o'clock news here tonight, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> and I don't think we'll see any more than what we saw, Bob. Difficult to tell. We weren't in the right position. 25 seconds remaining. This victory could put Tulsa... 11 points ahead of Fort Lauderdale in the south. The strikers would have one game in hand. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three. It's gonna be over here for Team America as the Tulsa Roughnecks come into RFK Stadium and steal a three to two win from Team America on what have to, would have to be called a questionable winning goal, but I tell you, I would guess that most coaches would tell you over the course of the season, we've had a few taken away from us. Once in a while, we gotta get one or two from the officials, and that's what happened here this afternoon. Bob, the only thing I can say is Guy Frichur, the senior linesman who did not make the call, was in perfect position. He didn't put his flag up. The goal was scored, the goal was allowed. There we see Alcas Panagulius, the Team America coach, arguing with the officials. So Tulsa is 14 and 13 with 120 points. They have an 11 point lead for first place in the Southern Division. It's 3 2, a Tulsa final. We'll return with final statistics after this word from your local station.